Guten Tag. All right, what's up everybody? How are we doing today? So we're gonna do the real cost of living in Vietnam. In Saigon, because I can't, I haven't lived in other places, I should tell my buddy to do one in Tanang, what the cost of living is there. But I think it's gonna be pretty similar. And it depends on what district you're living in in Saigon. It depends on what you're doing. It depends on if you party. It depends on like 500 things. So we're gonna try to unpack that properly. I've already shot a video like this before. It's one of the most popular videos I've shot. So I figured I'd do a kind of a bit more of a follow-up with a bit more detail in it and a bit more understanding of actually what it can be and can't be depending on your personality and your food and how much you drink, all this stuff. So let's get into it. So first things first, apartments have gone up. So if you were here like 2018 before that, and you were in district one and you had like a three or $400 apartment, that's now a $500, $600 apartment. It changed that quickly. Um, granted, rents back down again, it's still higher than those times. So <clears throat> if you want a decent apartment, that's pretty nice with newer amenities, it's gonna be at least 500 bucks in district one. District two, around the same price. District three is, is higher. District three is 600 all the way up to 3,000, just because the inventory is really low there. There's not much. And the ones that are cheaper are gonna be all Vietnamese apartments. And if you're totally cool with that, like they're not as polished at all, they're older, they're usually not as taken care of. Um, they're just a rougher product. And there's a lot of like outside noise. You know, you'll hear neighbors, you'll hear people above you, below you if you're in a, a high rise. So, I mean, these are things to take into consideration, but for a single person, you can get a pretty darn nice studio, like I had my first one, in District 1, good location to all the cool stuff, for 600 bucks. And then the air conditioning and the electricity is gonna be separate on that. And mine together was anywhere from 50 to $100 extra a month, depending on how much I use the air conditioner. Cell phone, super cheap. Depending on what package you get, it can be anywhere from 100K a month, which is $4, all the way up to 500K a month, which is $20. So I have a $20 package because I have 20 gigabytes a day for when I was live streaming and when I'll pick up my live streaming again. So that's, that's cell phone. Oh, internet. Internet's around uh, 200K. Can be as cheap as 100 if you get a slow connection two two to 300k so between four and twelve dollars a month depending on how high you of a package you get i have fiber now 120 120 and ours was cheap ours was like a hundred bucks for two years or something because we paid the whole two years ahead of time so as you can see the cost is real low unless you're coming from like I'm talking, especially if you were in a city, if you lived in like LA, Chicago, Miami, any of these places, this is like huge savings. Like, you know, especially if you came from LA, you'll be like, holy shit, this is like awesome. I'm saving so much money, which is what it is, you know? I'm pretty good financially. I'm not as broke as I've usually been. I'm still broke, but like, I'm way more comfortable and not stressed out about anything here. So it's, it's pretty awesome, to be honest with you. I, I pretty much love it. So first time a long time since my IT business was successful, which was like a long time ago, that I felt really comfortable with things. I'm not rich. I mean, when, once my channel gets bigger, which will take time, uh, then we'll start racking in the money, hopefully. We're on Win Way, Walking Street. But yeah, uh, let's continue the cost of living thing. So then you've got a moped or a scooter if you're gonna wanna buy a scooter. You can get a scooter if you want a shitty one, 200 bucks. If you want a mid-level, five to 700, and if you want like some badass one, 1,000 to 2,000 bucks. And it's pretty easy to get. The license for uh, operating a scooter lasts as long as your visa. It takes about 15 minutes going there to the place and then coming back a week later and picking it up. And it costs like 30K, I wanna say. So like, you know, a dollar something. Dollar twenty and dollar eighteen, dollar oh eight maybe. So, or you can pay an agency like eighty bucks to do it. Again, that's up to you. A lot of expats just don't even try to do anything on their own. 
and they pay an agency to do everything and don't ask any questions. It works pretty well for most, um, so you can go that route too. That's all up to you, all up to your personal preferences. Um, clothes and stuff, they have an H&M here. They have, uh, what was the other one? That's just like H&M, but a little bit higher, higher up. I forget the name of it now. But they have an H&M here. It's pretty much the same prices as H&M in America. Um, you can have clothes made as well. That's pretty cheap. So your clothing cost is gonna be pretty low unless you really are hip and wanna buy a bunch of stuff all the time. Electronics, consumer goods, uh, pretty much the same prices in America, maybe sometimes 5% more, sometimes 5% less, such as my Sony ZV-1 camera. I got for around 10% less than what it was selling for in America anywhere at the time of when I purchased it. It depends on the product. Um, Apple products sell for the laptops are about the same price, but the phones sell for usually 50 to 100 bucks more. So that's something to be thinking about for sure. Trying to pack in a bunch of information pretty quick. Oh, what else can I think of? I've talked about this so many times, but if you've got big feet, like size 13 shoes, I would bring three or four of your favorite pairs so you don't have to worry about getting shoes. Because you pretty much have to buy them from America and then ship them here, and that's a little costly of a thing and then you've got to wait the time but it's very possible to get anything delivered from america to here there's a whole video i've done about it just look for it uh getting items from america i think it's called or something like that maybe somebody can find it and drop it in the comment section and then i'll be in the comment section so what else what are the costs so this is the stuff that depends on you what you want to do and this is where it can get expensive for the guys, I'm sure most of you guys are going to want to be, maybe even the girls too, but but going out and drinking, that's the first big topic we, we shall discuss. I want to take a break. I've been walking around filming for an hour and a half. Um, but for sure, drinking can be your most expensive expense by a very large, large, large amount. Um, especially if you get stupid and go to lady bars all the time or if you go into like Japantown and drink all the time, which is kind of more like lady bars. But Japantown has a mix of like regular bars and lady bars. So if you find the right bar, like I go to two bars there that, you know, aren't lady bars, <clears throat> just bars where you sit down and drink with your friend and talk. If you find something like that, you're gonna be okay. <coughs> My throat was so dry from talking for two hours straight. Excuse me, I didn't mean to cough on camera. I apologize. But, uh, Drinking can be a real big one, you know. Or just going to Boy Vane when you're first here. You can go to Boy Vane if you go crazy and spend 100 bucks, 200 bucks. And by crazy, I mean like doing balloons and drinking hard alcohol instead of beer. Um, you can really waste a bunch of money. And you can find yourself going there every day for a month straight and having a bunch of fun, but again, depleting or charging up a card a, a bunch. and. Boy Vain has a whole scam system towards the end of the night. Like if they know you're getting drunk towards like midnight to four and you leave and you and you pay on a credit card, they're not gonna let you pay on a credit card. They're gonna play this game where they're like, oh, the credit card machine's broke. You gotta pay cash. And then you've gotta go to an ATM and pull out cash and you know, waste money on the ATM fees, transaction fees, unless you have like a Charles Schwab account, which most people don't, because I think they do a credit score check now and you've got to have a pretty high credit check to get a Charles Schwab account. I love when people put that in the comment section, just get a Charles Schwab account. It's not obtainable for most people to get a Charles Schwab account unless they got quite a bit of money. Uh, most people are gonna have a regular like Chase, Bank of America, um, Citibank, stuff like that. I have Citibank and then I have Techcom Bank and VIB Bank here. But yeah, these are gonna be things you're gonna to wanna to calculate. Drinking can be such a large portion. It, you can spend as much drinking as you would on your rent and bills in a month easy if you don't check yourself before you wreck yourself. So, I mean, to be honest, your first month here, you're gonna to wanna to go crazy, which is fine, go crazy. Blow that money that first month. But after one month, set like a date on the calendar. Start to check yourself. Go, go from going out seven days a week to two days a week, just on the weekend. And then one day a week, like I'm at. And sometimes I do one day every three weeks. Like, 
because I just don't feel like I don't I don't need to go out. I'm just fine sitting at home and hanging out with Winnie. And yeah, I would like it if Winnie went out and drank. She just doesn't drink, so I mean, if she went out and drank, I would just always go out with her and drink. There would be no problem there. She only has like one drink though, so like she's ready to be home by like 10, you know. Um. So yeah, the, the drinking can be a really big, big, big price thing. Um, also food. Uh, people think I don't like Vietnamese food. It's, it's pretty funny. Like, you know, my first six months here, all I ate was Vietnamese food every single day, three meals a day. And I love it. I love pho. I love chicken curry. Uh, I love a lot of, I love cold noodle. I, I don't know the exact name for, for all this stuff. I love a banh mi. I mean, I love these things. Like. It, it's so funny that the misconception is that I don't like Vietnamese food when I, I really do. Um, usually when I don't like a Saigonese dish, it's because there's too much sugar in it or it's too strong of a, of a particular taste. But if you go back and watch my real old reviews of like pho and stuff, I, you see me destroying pho. So I mean, I ate it for a really long time every day, three days a meal. So yeah, it's nice to break it up every once in a while. But I, 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 dig I digress. I want to continue talking about food because food can be the, the 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 real big big money money grab too as well especially if you like fine dining and stuff like this you know you can spend a lot on food you can go and spend like american prices on food like american restaurant prices you can go like if you get caught up like going to like no no offense to eddie's but i really liked eddie's and i would highly recommend the restaurant but if you got caught up eating there every day your food bill is going to be high. I mean, that place is expensive. It's no joke. You're going to spend 20, 30 bucks when you go there to eat. I mean, sure, sometimes they have a like special. Um, maybe you can squeeze out only spending 15 bucks, but you have to understand $15 for a meal here is a lot of money, especially when you can have a Vietnamese food for dinner that costs 50, 60 K. That's, you know, two to three dollars. So after you've been here for a while, it clicks in a little more like we have one lavish meal a week usually not even lavish we usually have korean barbecue or japanese barbecue or like we had eddie's or we'll have something unique once a week the rest of the week i usually cook food at home or she orders vietnamese food or we eat vietnamese food together i really like the roasted duck too the roasted duck is phenomenal it comes with this black duck sauce and a couple banh mi's really really delicious delicious food um, i like i love the roasted chicken too um, there's this really good chicken place here called Chiquita, but it's a bit expensive too because it, it caters more towards the Western palate. Although they're almost seemingly all Vietnamese anytime I go in there and eat. But it, it's a little pricey, but I love Vietnamese food. And I'm sorry that I created some perception I don't because you, you see me try some weird dishes that I rate, I guess, lower. Well, it's because my taste buds don't like it, you know? Uh, to be fair, I should go and re-review a bunch of the early stuff so you can see how much I really like a lot of different dishes. In fact, there's a chicken curry video coming up uh, way before this where I think I gave it an 8.5, you know? That's super high. I, I, I don't give much in the 8.5 to 9.0 category. And I think I've given 1.91. So, I mean, you got to realize that the scoring system for my, my food tasting is when you're in the nines, that's the greatest thing you've ever had in your whole life. That's something you would travel hours for, so. And that's something you would like visit a specific sector for just to have that thing. And you would wait in line for hours for it. Like, that's how I look at the scale. People are too easy to hand out high scores on food. Like, how can you give something a 98 or a 99? That's like literally one of the greatest things you've ever had in your whole entire life. So yeah, that, that's why my score scale is the way it is. It kind of follows El, El Presidente. Uh, from Barstool Sports, David Portnoy's Pizza Scale, kind of the same exact route. Sorry if there's wind on the microphone, nothing I can do about it. I'm trying to make some good videos for you guys today. Haven't done information videos for a while, so that's why uh, we're out here shooting an information video. We shoot three today, actually, so. They'll air at different times, um, for sure. But yeah, I'm, I've really come across the key points of how you can waste money and how you can save money here. And if you plan to stay here long term and you want to work, definitely get your teaching stuff in order. If you have like a college degree and you just need to finish one more year, go finish that one more year, especially now that it's online if you're in America, and then get your TEFL course. 
And then you've got certified, legit paperwork to teach without ever worrying about losing that teaching job. Vietnam is one of the few countries where teaching is still profitable. In Japan, it's, it's slowly and slowly, and now pretty much is not a profitable thing to do in Japan anymore as it used to be. But I know plenty of teachers that aren't alcoholics that make plenty of good money. Xin chào, hello. I know plenty of teachers here that make pretty good money, save it away. They're, they don't go out and get drunk every night. I mean, they did their first year, but they're many years in now. And they are able to squirrel away money. So it's one of the few places where teaching is still profitable. So you can get a teaching job without degrees. They are gonna fake those degrees for you. And there's gonna be some coffee money exchange between however, whoever you have set up that deal with that school. And there's a potential that the Vietnam police can just check out that school one day and be like, I wanna see everyone's paperwork here. They don't have that paperwork. Then they ask you to leave the country and you get set on a blacklist and that costs anywhere from two to three thousand dollars to get off. And usually when that happens to those people, they get so salty about it or they don't have enough money to where they can afford to waste three thousand dollars and then find a new job and pay for a new visa, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you won't see that. Uh, it doesn't happen that often. I'm going to be fair with you. Yeah, but it's a possibility. And since it's realistically if you are still wanting to move here it's going to be a year so you've got time to get these things in order at least get the TEFL thing the TEFL certificate it's not that hard to get you just do online classes i think that's a little bit better than not having any of the paperwork and completely falsifying it all but teaching is a very good job you can also get office jobs here too they have a lot of office jobs i see a lot of guys all around here working at offices for companies so if you want to be a nine to fiver you can be a nine to fiver here as well and the nine to fives here are great. They're, they're not anything like they are in America. Um, they're really lax on things. Like people take naps at lunch and shit. Um, you can go run errands for yourself. It's not habitual. Um, they're open. They're, it's a more comfortable working place here for a nine to five job. I don't do interviews or I'd interview some of my friends. Like there's just so many people that do interviews and they never do well statistics wise. So like I don't need to go down that lane. Maybe I'll do like a Patreon podcast with one of them. I don't know. And if you didn't know, I have a Patreon podcast. Um, you can support the channel for as little as a dollar a month on Patreon. I would recommend maybe two to five dollars. <laughs> a lot of people go for the one dollar option though. But I have no tier system on mine. Uh, I'm thinking about setting up a tier system since so many people just do the dollar. And it kind of, it would be better if people had the option to have more content if they paid more and less content if they didn't pay as much. I'm throwing the idea around, I'm not sure yet. But yeah, it's patreon.com forward slash fat and broke. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, I have a lot of these information videos. Um, I have over 500 videos out now. You just have to scroll and look. Um, I have weeks worth of content for you now. Um, I hope you enjoy my videos. Let's get back to the topic at hand. I think we've covered pretty much everything. I think I've nailed what I've wanted to go over here for first cost of living. Travel's super cheap. Air flight is super cheap internally. So if you're gonna to wanna to plan a trip while you're staying here and living here, a trip's not gonna cost you much depending on what hotel you stay at. The air flight's gonna be 50 to $100. Um, the hotel can be anywhere from $10 if you go real cheap, all the way up to 60 bucks for a five star in most of these cities. Um, travel's very easy. You can also just take a sleeper bus, which doesn't cost much at all. It's like 200K. You sleep in your own little thing, pull this thing over, take a ride two to six hours to wherever you're at, and you're there. And then you can rent a motorbike for 100K a day at the hotel that you stay at. They'll provide you a bike. Um, overall, it's extremely cheap. Some people are going to go, oh, it's so much more expensive. Uh, Thailand's so much cheaper. I've never lived in Thailand, but I've been there quite a few times. Like, no, no longer than two weeks at a stretch, but... Uh, it didn't seem like it was too much cheaper. It seemed like they were about on the same price. They're pretty similar in that area as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I, I, I've discussed this before. You can live dirt cheap. You can get like a $300 apartment here in a Vietnamese district. That is not going to be a nice apartment. That is not going to be great. But if you're some super cheap guy and that all you care about is being cheap and getting over here, it's possible to get done. You can also find like roommates. You can find... I know plenty of dudes that are like two or three, four deep in like a two bedroom apartment in a nicer area. And then that brings the 
cost down to a bunch. But these, some of them are like in their late 30s. I'm like, I personally don't want to live with any other dudes anymore. I'm too old for that shit. And I did plenty of that in my 20s. I've already played that game. And it feels like going back, a step backwards by doing the roommate thing again. But if you need to save money and you want to be cheap, it's a total viable option. Um, I think I've covered everything. And as far as getting electronics and all that stuff, everything's available here. You can get all, the newest Apple iPhone, newest Apple laptop, the newest whatever, the TVs, all that shit. That's another thing I've talked about it before, but you can also, if you know you're gonna stay here and you know that you love that apartment or that apartment complex, it might be wise to, to slowly buy the stuff and rent an unfurnished unit because they go for around 20 to 30% less than a furnished unit does. It's something to kick around. Uh, for me, I went on furniture this time and it turned out to be the better option. I got actual furniture I liked. I got an actual TV that I liked. So, I mean, that's something you have to debate, but it can be economically cheaper to do it that way if you figure out all the math and how long you're gonna be here for. Oh, I'm done talking. That is enough for today. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this uh, information valuable. If I left anything out, leave it in the comments. Be constructive, be peaceful. Don't be negative. Um, negativity gets us nowhere. Let's just all be positive. I hope, like I said before, I hope you guys really enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace out.